how many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. Last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night, and I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. What are you getting at? What act of violence? We... we found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. She was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night, and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and assisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. Don't blame yourself, Louis. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing.
Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. chest. Sir Johann von Wulner. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Wulner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No. No, I... Nothing special. Lord Mortimer must have informed you of the necessity for everyone to remain in their rooms until further notice. Certainly, but I'm a guest, not a prisoner. I was looking for a servant since we don't all, unfortunately, have one at our disposal. Yeah, right. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. Chest with a half circle pattern. Has Sir finished with this room? No, I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sir would like to leave, Sir has only to tell me. My dear Elizabeth. I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. 
we won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and, unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please, excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for... The clock stopped at 3.54. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. August 24th, 1792. A pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Right. I shall have to find its owner. Piece of fabric, high quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. doesn't correspond to Emily's black outfits, and Elizabeth doesn't have anything quite like this in her wardrobe. Let's take a closer look. It's a little dirty. It must come from the bottom of the dress where it touches the ground. I recognize that moiré pattern. It's the same as the travel dress my mother was wearing when she left. But why the hell did she come into this room? of laudanum. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. The blood spatter indicates that the murder must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I... I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. Knocked over a bottle of wine. Elizabeth served me last night. Still just as disgusting. 
I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. It looks as though the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle, as if, as if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she... She must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck. Maybe mutilations. She bled from the nose. signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. What a strange smell. Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. No wounds, but blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left, except that tattooed symbol. No marks or bruising around the wrists. It doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. The direction of the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. 
This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated. Possibly held by someone or something. Has Sam finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. President George Washington. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. Greetings, Lee. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Tell me, Mr. President. Had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? 
I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countrymen or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. It would appear that she wasn't invited to the conference. That doesn't surprise me. The poor girl was in no way concerned by our business, and she had no political clout. So. I don't understand why Sir Gregory invited her during the conference of his good friend Lord Mortimer. He must have realized that he wouldn't have much time to grant her. Preparing a conference does not seem an easy task. On the evening of our arrival, Lord Mortimer didn't even welcome us, what with his being so busy and all. Yes, you're right, Louis. I didn't think of that. It is indeed rather surprising. The easiest thing to do is simply ask him, you know. Of course. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Monsignor, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Huh, that's me. Duke Manuel Godoy. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. King George III in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Dear E. I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should, under no circumstances, hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. T.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Emily has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but 
I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Two coils circle the lock. A letter from William Pitt, the elder, addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. Devil's thorn, to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. Death came quickly. You can be assured of that. If such a senseless act can happen here, then none of us is truly safe anywhere. Lord Mortimer must be mortified that one of his guests could have committed such an act, don't you think? He is indeed very upset about it. But it's only natural after such a violent murder. Violent? What do you mean? Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. Oh my god, Louis. How awful. The murderer must have had a serious grudge against her to set upon her like that. It must have been a crime of passion. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? I'm now interviewing all the guests to establish the alibis for each person. Just so that I can cross you off the list of suspects, can you tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder? Am I given to understand that I'm on the list of suspects? Don't take it the wrong way, but I must consider every possibility. Well, if you absolutely wanted to be sure of my activities that evening, you only had to join me, you know. I know, Emily. Especially since I couldn't prevent the murder, even though I spent part of the evening with Elizabeth. You... You're sure it's not too hard to bear for you? The fact is, I don't have a choice. But I will find the murderer. I owe Elizabeth that, at least. Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Gray silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louia. I... Do you realize what this means? 
If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any grey silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister, since we wear the same clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Napoleon Bonaparte. The Prince by Machiavelli. Perfect read for anyone with a surfeit of ambition. Hmm. That might come in handy. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed, it is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and His Eminence, Piaget as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, Monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh, la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, oh, couldn't think straight, so I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. Not really, no. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. My dearest son, I'm writing to implore you to act quickly. The situation is rapidly worsening here. Paoli continues to steer our motherland, Corsica, toward open warfare between France and England. His men are everywhere. We are obliged to go into hiding and are unable to remain in the same place for more than two days. I wouldn't be surprised if they targeted us soon. Make haste, my son. You hold our destiny in your hands. 
your loving mother, Maria Letizia Bonaparte. Fragment of amber. There's just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in it. My dear Napoleon, as previously agreed, I would like to ask you to join us in January on my island to participate in the high society meeting organized for the occasion. We shall be able to continue our discussion about our project for a new order for France. I have a proposition to make to you concerning your wish to put a strong leader at the head of France. I trust you to be discreet as to your coming. See you soon. Lord William Mortimer. It's a beautiful weapon. A lovely damask blade. It's marked with the initials of the manufacturer in Versailles. Corn decorated with a cockade. It must belong to a French soldier. So Jacques Perru. What do you want from me, Deriche? Greetings. It's fallen to me Cut the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. It's never too late, sir. If you have something to say, now is the time. You don't understand. Everything's already written. It's over. Why is he behaving like the perfect culprit? What is it that's already written? I'm not sure I follow you. No, you don't. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Mortimer.
pattern with four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister Marie-Alain. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to... No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. If you were armed the night of my arrival, can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all. Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right. The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations. You've wrapped up the investigation. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Let's get right to it. Are you Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Sir Johann von Wulner. Sorrows of Young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Werner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me. 
but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Volder had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Golden elixir. A chest locked with a four letter code. Surely a word close to the owner's heart. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Verter dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Duriche. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. Exactly how long had you been seeing her? I have no reason to answer you. I see. Is that what you want me to tell Lord Mortimer when he asks what I found out? It's... it's only been a few weeks. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do.
Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Pell. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. been studying him for a while now, and I don't think he was lying. Yet, I'm surprised how easy it was for me to read him. It must surely be his military side. I wish they all could be like that. My investigation would be finished already. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Were you able to recognize the Prowler? Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway.
But if I remember rightly, the night of her arrival was also the night of my arrival. So the person he saw leaving Elizabeth's room was Washington. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Greetings, Liam. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. I shan't keep you any longer, Mr. President. Feel free, Louis. If there's anything I can do, just ask. Thank you, Mr. President. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. 
I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? Knowing my mother, she would be the cat. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. Yet he told me that you had spoken and that you hadn't been able to reach an understanding. Hmm. That's putting it mildly. Mr. Bonaparte is one of those guys who only understands people who think like he does. Ah, I see what you mean. He is indeed rather inflexible when it comes to certain subjects. But I am still of the opinion that you can manage to get along. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Did my mother intend to finance a war? I'm not sure that I follow. No. Your mother's aim was not so much to partake in a war, but rather to make Monsieur Bonaparte accountable. France is in turmoil, and having support of a military man can often come in handy, Louis. You'll see. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? If... Only my mother had trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the Order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I am sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Maybe she found something out. What do you mean? My mother has a gift for investigating. 
If she had picked up a lead, nothing would have stopped her. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. Huh, are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint-Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister, and she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation, until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. One last thing, although I don't know if there is a connection. I'm listening. A gate was forced the other night near the wharf. Nothing serious, just a few small things damaged. Mm-hmm. I see. I might be about to find a trace of her passage. Sorry, Mother, but I don't want him on my back. You'll have to take the blame for me. I can't see how Sarah could have done this, but then I can't think of any other solution either. I'll take a closer look. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study.
there are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. What is this disc? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his Savior. door appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. We'll, we'll see if it works. It's open. Several portraits of apostles all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. The New Testament. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John and Jordan. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Reni. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. The 
chest with the occult symbol representing air. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. It's Saint John, painted by Guido Rini. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Gogotha. I and my father are one. Now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Painting of St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Rini. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. The drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini, he's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Of the four apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th apostle. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange, there's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code, there, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere, and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure, maybe? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, 
but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does Mother mean by that? like it's been taken down recently. What was it my mother said? That she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle. Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to and now John is telling them prophecies? St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right. This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? There's nothing worth noticing here. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. The sentence in Hebrew. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust. Eight in all. No, nothing of value here. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust.
In him, God has chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we may be holy and blameless before him. They should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? Now, there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. I and my father are one. This book is incredibly precious. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor, and glory, and blessing. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and a half a time, from the face of the serpent. Hey, a new note. It's been folded carefully in the corner of this page. The writing, it, it, it's not my mother's. S, I found the book in your effects. I've concealed it where no one can get their hands on it. I can assure you. Awaiting your instructions, I will hear your reply like he who hears the angel. Hears the angel? What does that mean? Oh, it's probably the place where she was expecting to get the location of the next note. something else behind this painting. It says, half of each group will join the first city of Corinth. What the hell does that mean? Now, therefore, 
There is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today, I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. And that first group of pilgrims, how many are there now? If I refer to the chapter I'm reading at the moment, six. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah, this last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. St. Paul is the only saint to be presented twice in these paintings, contrary to the other apostles. How come? Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. This painting has been hanging here for a long time. A lot of dust is built up on it. Well, a finger has drawn a number in the thin layer of dust. I can read the number four. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here, a message from mother and reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? I'm guessing it's a metaphor. I need to figure out what this means. Mortimer's getting his guests together. I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious.
It's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. You are expected in the small salon, sir. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look. I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. I've got a question that might seem a little bit strange. I'm listening. If I said, go beyond the nightmare, would that ring any bells? Hmm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? It might be a place, I, I don't know where, but... It's a lead. You ought to ask his eminence. He knows the house and its estate very well, being a frequent visitor here. Thanks for the advice. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. <laughs> I better keep that to myself for the time being. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm down, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel, what made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention, which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if... Oh, the hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily.
Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maras de Richet. Are you related to Sarah de Richet? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you, as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? To hear you speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Absolutely, but I was hoping that you could tell me more about it. Well, she was planning to sell me a very old book. I will make no secret of the fact that I am passionate about the subject. And when Sarah spoke to me about it, her account literally had me enthralled. <laughs> I can think of nothing else since. You might have come across some old books. In her belongings, perhaps? As my mother's got so many old books, uh, I'm afraid I won't be able oh, to... Oh, it's easy. You, you can't mistake this one. It's an ancient grimoire, composed of seven parts. Each one is closed under lock and key. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. If you find it, you mustn't tamper with it, you see? That, that's unusual. Unfortunately, that doesn't ring a bell. I'll look again, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once, precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No, you can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner. 
and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Birchert was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. Your dear king, I should think. What? You mean Frederick William? Oh, my poor fellow. You are miles away. That stupid, pretentious puppet wields no real power. But seeing as you do not wish to be serious, so be it. Good luck to you. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? Would you have any more information about the conference Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Meaning... This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. He's undeserved titles. More than ten in just four years. And each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur.
go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You've caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I am very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. What do you mean? The situation is ready to explode with France over Catalonia. Well, the Duke must have a darn good reason to be absent and come here, mustn't he? When Lord Mortimer invites you, Louis, you come. It's always in your best interest. I wouldn't say that personally, but... Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving, but you'll see. Everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good Lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. Your Eminence, I'm sorry for King Louis, but he did everything to put himself there. Louis, how can you say such a thing? Even if France rejects the church, you don't go and behead a person of high status. They always serve our cause better alive than dead. Politically, it's absurd. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I... 
Well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Think of a place and tell me the first thing that comes into your mind when I say the nightmare. Hmm. Uh, let me think. I'd say uh, Lord Mortimer's favorite painting on the wall behind his desk. You know, that painting caused quite a stir when it was exhibited. It is titled The Nightmare, and it shows a woman lying down with a creature sitting background. A horse. <laughs> I don't know if it will be of any help, but I can't think of anything else. You never know. Thank you for that, though, Your Eminence. Oh, I gotta go and see it just in case, though. I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the church. You can believe me. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality. And I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, Your Eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves little doubt. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing. is surrounded by a triple circle.
There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Greek drachma, one of the rare ancient coins to be mentioned both in the Bible and in the Quran. So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? Let's take a closer look. The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. I just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Aha, I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great, that's all I needed.
Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amade de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? The author is Pierre Amade de la Salle, none other than the Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge of Paris. Now I understand why the dates are offset. He's using dates based on the Analusis, year zero of the Masonic calendar, by adding 4,000 years to the Gregorian calendar. But I thought that that calendar starts in March. The Crusades took place not long after the year 1000. Here all the dates say 5,000 and something. I'm guessing this dating system begins 4,000 years before the calendar that we use. Yet, I'm getting the feeling that there's something else, another small detail, but, but what is it? The famous call of Pope Urban II. 20 years after the capture of Jerusalem from the Arabs by the Turks, Urban II convened the council. He promises a plenary indulgence to Christians who go and get Jerusalem back from the Turks. The result, the Jewish community on the road to Jerusalem found itself persecuted for no reason. 12,000 Jews would perish, not to mention the massacre of Ma'ara, where acts of cannibalism by Frankish crusaders were reported, or even the capture of Jerusalem, where approximately 30,000 were left dead. It signaled the beginning of centuries of wars of religion, isn't finished and it looks like Mortimer probably did it not bad but you can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period now, now what have we got here well, it looks like a model a model of a lock it's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes well I hope I never have to try and unlock it A bird. Sarah de Riche? Waldo, you know Sarah? Tell me the door code. Well, Waldo, is your Master good? Hmm, might come in handy. Let's take a closer look. Dark chocolate beans, very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. A minor bird. 
Tell me the door code. Here I am talking to a bird. Shame on me. Oh, what have I done? It looks like I've killed him. Oh, shit. I better not hang around. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? Or how Louis VII, King of France, eager to be pardoned for the death of thousands of innocent people in the fire of the Church of Vitry convinces the Pope to authorize him to lead his own crusade. The result? In Germany, a new outburst of violence against the Jewish community. And a monumental fiasco by poor Louis VII, cuckolded by his wife's uncle. The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint-Jean-d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. Painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. I get the impression I've seen that before. In fact, I've read something on the Crusades before in the study. He clearly loves the subject. Alexander Mortimer the first, the twelfth month of Anno Lucis, five thousand one hundred ninety. That's a funny date. That date in five thousand is something again. Hmm. I wonder what in the world it means. Dates calculated in Anno Lucis. The twelfth month is February? So that makes that makes it February 1191. by Paul Rubens. Hey, there are two dates on this painting. 1154 AD and 
5,154 AL. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Open sesame. <laughs> Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. Looking map of the Orient, indeed. Locked. shows the forces present in Europe, it's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants.
This shows the forces present in America. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Guillaume Trimor. Hmm. He says, it is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in and goes on. There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? Honey, the remedy of the gods. shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns, even for Mortimer. This is my mother's writing. Trail. What is she up to? Obviously, she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but, but where? The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. table of alchemical elements. So, Lord Mortimer also studies alchemy? It seems like he's interested in everything. Am I seeing things or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Even at the order, it took us ages to get one of those.
iron mask. I wonder who it's for. Hmm. That must be for writing the homing pigeon messages. Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. Some goat skulls, chicken legs. Now we all know what that's for. I'm a little surprised at Mortimer. I didn't seem as the type to be organizing little pagan parties, invoking occult powers, and dancing naked under the full moon. I'm more used to seeing cheap charms like this sold by charlatans in Pré Saint Gervais. Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. It is a typical draw in a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance, that announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Oh, his right hand is missing. These are feathers. Pigeon, probably. Looks like obsidian or... Onyx. He must weigh a ton. Something strange about this table. The Little Surgeon's Perfect Collection. Preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Oh, shit. How am I going to get out of here now? This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. That looks too easy. It could be a trap.
looks like the same as the one on the other side. Whoa, whoa. If the grid closes a bit more every time I enter a wrong date, I'd, I'd better not mess up again. It doesn't seem to be working. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. <sighs> the wheels are stuck shit. I'm cornered like a rat. Someone's coming. Please don't let it be Mortimer. Who is it? Deliberately avoiding me. Four years ago, I was his favorite. But nowadays, I have to ask for an audience with his lordship. Damn it! It's Peru. I don't know if I should, but... Well, that's it! I've had enough of being humiliated! I'm wasting my time here. After everything I've done on his behalf, he dares treat me like a lackey? I've bled the Parisian elite for the sake of his whims, and what have I got to show for it? He doesn't even have the courtesy to give me five minutes of his time. I wanted to put my mind at ease. Well, that's done. I know what I've got to do now. I must find my mother. Uh, so much for discretion. Mr. Peru, it's me, Mr. Deriche. What the devil is going I on? I need your help. Where are you, Deriche? Behind the painting. Open it, please. I've shut myself in. There's a pedal under Lord Mortimer's desk. Can you see it? There's no... Hang on. Yes. Good. Now press it. Yeah, yeah. Done. You should see something resembling a frame with numbers. Yes? You have to turn them to set the combination. One, one, nine, one. Well, well. Poking our nose into Mortimer's little secrets, are we? You do surprise me. It's not what you're thinking. I'll explain everything. No, you will not, sir. It has nothing to do with me, and by the way, I never even saw you. So, I'll be on my way now. Thanks again. I'm indebted to you. I won't forget this. Yeah, goodbye. I've wasted enough time. I better get moving if I want to find my mother. Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub? 
the worm before it's attained its final form. Charming. This note is about a meeting with Lord Mortimer. There's no doubt about it. All right, I need to find out where the sword that came with it's from in order to find Mother. You're choking, I hope. Don't tell me you've done that. Really? How do you expect me to guess? Oh, for God's sake, just ask them. We must absolutely inform Sir Gregory. How long has he been trying to collect all the spears? I must have brought him the first one 20 odd years ago. Do you know if he has managed to get the original? Well, in any case, he's got all the ones we had at the Vatican. He made me replace them with copies. But I don't understand your reaction. I'm sure it is nothing serious. Uh -huh. I can see very well you do not understand. You have done nothing less than sign our death warrants, and still you don't understand. I... Someone is listening. What? Monsieur de Richet, why not join us rather than find yourself eavesdropping? Well, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I'm sorry. Of course you didn't. So, my son, what can we do for you? I was wondering if you might have seen an object like this, here, at the manor. What are you playing at, Deriche? I'm afraid I can't help you, my son. Ask someone who knows the manor better than I do. One of the servants, for example. One of them is bound to help you. Thank you for your advice, Your Eminence. I didn't mean to spy on you, but you caught my attention. You brought spears as well, then? What? Did Mortimer ask you to bring him holy spears, too? Yes, but I thought I was the only one. How many of them have you brought, then? Eighteen, you know. Any relic even remotely to do with them, in fact. Eighteen spears? How many of them exist in all? No one knows. Especially as there is only one authentic one, of course. That all adds to the mystery, don't you think? Well... Uh, please leave us, monsieur. His eminence and I wish to finish our discussion alone. I am sorry, sir, but the conference room is under preparation and is consequently inaccessible to guests. Could you perhaps help me? What can I do for you, sir? 
where did this sword come from? From the garden, sir. That sword belongs to one of the statues in the garden. Thank you very much. Don't mention it, sir. The sword probably came from this garden, but what could it have been used for? Ariadne. In Greek mythology, she helped Theseus get through the labyrinth. Hmm. Looks like there's a crack in the region of the heart. If I recall the Iliad, Ariadne is none other than the daughter of Minos and Pasiphae. She was in love with Theseus and helped him in his quest to kill the Minotaur in return for a promise of marriage, if he defeated the monster. She gave him a reel of thread so that he could find his way back through the labyrinth, which was famous for being unsolvable. But once the beast was slain, the gallant was quick to abandon her on an island. Turns out heroes are not what they once were. Let's see. crack as long as my finger. And what's going to happen if, if I've got it wrong? Here's the famous Ariana's thread, thanks to which, if I remember rightly, Theseus avoided getting lost in the labyrinth. Pasiphae, daughter of Perseus and sister of Circe. She married Minos and became the queen of Crete. She has no cracks. All right, let's continue anyways. I wonder what this kiosk is doing in the middle of the garden. Too cramped to be able to do much. Well, there must be something going on there. Theseus, son of Aegeus, he's the one who slayed the Minotaur. Looks like a crack has been made on his torso. I wonder if Mother managed to solve this enigma. Asterion. It is rare to see him like this. In general, he's represented with the head of a bull, with the features of the Minotaur. The famous son of Minos and Pasiphae. This statue has a crack in it. Let's go.
Icarus. The son of Daedalus and Nocrate. Impossible to mistake him with those wings. After flying too close to the sun, he became unstuck and he fell to his death. <laughs> Pity. Hey, there's no crack here. Well, let's keep going. Ariadne. Let's try something else. Daedalus. He's the architect of the labyrinth, and if I'm not mistaken, he's also the father of Icarus. Hey, there's a crack in this statue, too. Asterion. This statue has a crack in it. Right. We'll soon see. Looks like this slab moves. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a passageway underneath it. It's up to the just to deliver judgment. Truth unlocks all possibilities. What is that? It's like a sort of opening mechanism. but it's booby-trapped. There's a little hole in, at the fingers. I'm pretty sure if I get it wrong, I'll, I'll get pricked. Damn you, Mortimer. Reminds me of traps I studied in the Egyptian tombs. Knowing Mortimer, I bet it's booby-trapped. There's a little hole in, at the fingers. I'm pretty sure if I get it wrong, I'll, I'll get pricked. Damn you, Mortimer. Reminds me of traps I studied in the Egyptian tombs. Asterion. Minos, son of Zeus and Europa. If I remember correctly, he was the king of Crete. Married to Pasiphae, he had many children, including the famous Ariadne, whom history remembers for her thread. Hey, there's a crack in that statue. The 
crack is in the region of the heart. Again? I... You can't be serious, Manuel. You know that's not going to happen. You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything. Even to... Agreed? I wasn't aware you had a choice. What's going on here? I... What now? What else must I do to win back my freedom? Obey me. Now get out! What was that? That's the third time in three days. <gasps> Let's see if you're you're in there, mother. Fragment of amber. Bandages? Hmm, someone's been patching themselves up. Looks like my mother took advantage of being in hiding to change her bandages, huh? This is silk. She must have used her own clothes. Hmm, there are patches where the blood isn't totally clotted. That's a good sign, right? She changed them recently, which proves she's still looking after herself and still believes in her chances. Oh, I'd love to tell her to keep hanging in there. Damn it, mother, now what's happened? 